Hello, welcome to my channel and flight music. In my last tutorial, I showed you three different ways that you could sidechain your kick in 808. In today's tutorial, I want to show you how to sidechain your kick in 808 in an advanced way that will help you glue them together to make them sound like one sound. Sign. Okay, this technique is something that I totally forgot about. I would have included it in the last tutorial that I did, but someone on Instagram actually hit me up and pointed this out to me and totally reminded me of this trick. But basically, if you look at my kick right here, I have a parametric EQ and a peak controller, but with the parametric EQ, I have a nice little boost at 60 hertz, which is pretty common, and then another boost at 704 hertz. And then when I pull up my 808, and turn this parametric EQ on, you'll see that I have a boost at 46 hertz and a dip at 734 hertz. So the dip at 734 hertz sort of compensates for the boost in my kick that I have at 704. You'll see that it's not exactly right on, but with the phase relationship that I have going on, if you don't understand phase, don't worry about it. In general, you just want to use your ears and figure out what frequency sounds best when you boost a frequency in your kick and uh, when you dip down a frequency in your 808. So in general, if you have a boost at 700 hertz, you want to dip down your 808 somewhere around 700 hertz. It won't necessarily be exactly 700 hertz. It's all going to depend on... Uh, the shape of the 808 in general and your phase relationship, you'll see that I have my kick uh, with reverse polarity on, which flips the phase. And basically with that off, you'll hear that some of the 808 cancels out the kick or vice versa. So in general, you just want to use your ears to turn that on and off. I'll sh show you what it sounds like with it off. And then with it on, you'll hear there's not a dramatic difference, but with this phase flipped, it does sound slightly better. The kick is hitting a little bit harder. So I went ahead and reversed that. Something else to keep in mind, you'll notice that I had the pitch turned up just one semitone. And whenever you change the pitch, it's going to change your waveform. It's going to change where your phase relationship is. So after you pitch your drums or pitch your sounds, that are layered together, make sure you flip that phase just to make sure that it's still hitting as hard as it could possibly hit. So this is my kick EQ and this is my 808 EQ. And you'll see that I'm actually boosting somewhere around the same frequency range in both. Um, even though it says 46 hertz here and 60 hertz here, there's still some frequencies within that 60 hertz range that is getting boosted. So whenever that happens, you're going to boost that overall signal altogether. So you'll notice that in my master channel, I'm actually clipping a little bit right now. It's just a little bit past zero, but you, do, you really don't want to have that on your master channel. It really doesn't matter as much on your individual channels because we are in 32-bit float point, which means even if you clip your kick, for example, if you turn it down later on in the process, in the rest of the buses that it's in, for example, I have my kick going into my drum bus. If I were to turn my drum bus down and um, it was clipping inside of the kick channel, it's no longer going to clip. That wasn't the case before, back when you're messing with uh, 24 point or anything, basically anything lower than 32 bit float point. Um, that would be still clipping. So you would actually still have that distorted signal going into your buses, but that's no longer the case with uh, most modern DAWs. So with these two frequency ranges boosted, I still like the sound of my 808 when it's boosted right here and the sound of my kick when it's boosted right there. Another thing that you'll notice is I have a, a low cut, AKA a high pass depending on how you want to call it, but it's both the same thing. This one on my kick is going all the way up to, it looks like 45 hertz. And then on my 808, it's going up to 
24 or 26, 25 hertz, 24. And the reason I do that, a lot of people will forget that um, there's actually lower frequencies below the 20 hertz range. We can't hear below 20 hertz, but you still want to cut some of those frequencies out because they can build up and cause muddiness in the overall mix. So even on your uh, low end items like your 808 and kick, I still put a high pass on those things. Even though it's a steep cut right here, there's still some signal that's going uh, past this. And I'll prove that to you by pulling up uh, span. And there you see that there's still plenty of signal coming out past 20 hertz. And it's not that you want to actually cut all of that out. If it's going past 20 hertz a little bit, that's okay. You still want that going for your basic feeling, your basic overall energy for, for the track. But if I didn't have these cut out, this would be going a little bit crazier than what, it, what it's doing right now. So that's just something to keep in mind whenever you're dealing with your low end. You still want to high pass some of those elements for sure. Another thing that you'll notice in the parametric EQ, I have high quality turned on for my kick and I have it turned off for my 808. Just because it says high quality, it doesn't mean that that's an option that you want. You wanna turn it on and off and see what actually sounds better to you. So let's go ahead and solo the kick. And I'm gonna turn this off. And you'll notice with the high-end band, it actually made this a little steeper. Turning it on made the kick sound just a little more round. It's kind of hard to explain uh, in general, but again, I'm just using my ears and testing out what I like better. It's going to have an even more dramatic effect on uh, this 808. So let's go ahead and solo the 808. So let's turn the high quality on. And turn it off. And you'll see that nothing really changed in uh, the band shapes. But to my ears, I can hear that the 808 is hitting just a little bit harder with the high quality turned off. When I turn it on, it just sounds more round. It sounds flatter, more round when I have the high quality turned on. So I'm going to turn it off again. And I'm just feeling just a little bit more presence. And you'll notice that I'm using Apple earbuds right now. I'm not even using my main studio headphones. Um, that's because I have something going on with my ears right now. So I'm not able to put my headphones over my entire ear right now, <laughs> but uh, hopefully that goes away pretty soon. But yeah, even in the Apple earbuds, I can hear just enough of a difference. It would probably be even more dramatic if I had my headphones on. Um, but yeah, just whatever listening environment you're used to, uh, just test out the high quality on or off. I don't recommend just having it on all the time <clears throat> or off all the time. Okay, so here's how we're gonna glue these two together. So <clears throat> again, you'll notice that I have pretty much the same frequency boosted in the low end. Uh, they're just slightly different, but they're still overlapping each other. So what I'm gonna do is have peak controller on my kick drum and something to remember, you gotta mute it and unmute it when you first load it up because you're not going to hear the signal coming from your kick anymore if you don't do that. And then on the 808, all I did, right click on the green volume volume knob right here and click link to controller. And all I did was just select peak from the peak controller. And these are the settings that I went ahead and used on my peak controller. I had the decay turned all the way up and the volume turned down just a little bit. On the bass, this is really important. You want to set it to 50%. 50% is this middle line right here. So that makes it so that your whatever band you're affecting is at default right where it should be, which is just right in the middle, not affecting anything. So now with the peak controller turned on, you'll notice that this five band is ducking all of this every single time the kick hits. So let's listen to what that sounds like.
And let's listen to what that sounds like when it's turned off. Now, right off the bat, you'll notice that when it's turned off that I have clipping in my master channel. And then when I have it turned on, it's no longer clipping. And that's because when you have a buildup of energy like that, it's obviously going to boost the overall signal. So by ducking this every single time the kick hits, you're lowering the overall signal altogether. But it also cr creates this gluing effect that makes it sound like more, one sound. So this is actually really helpful with anytime you're layering sounds like your synths or maybe a bell over a piano, taking the frequencies that are boosted within the same range or even just taking frequencies and ducking them in the right places whenever the piano hits versus when the bell hits, it's going to create a more cohesive sound altogether. Now, some of you might be saying, well, I'd rather just go ahead and duck out the whole entire sound with what I showed you last week with the different side chaining techniques that I showed you. Perfectly fine. That's definitely going to take care of all that in general. But if you do want a bigger sounding um, low end or a bigger sounding synth, it's actually going to be better to use this technique instead because you still have these other frequencies that are playing while the other instrument is hitting, which is why I really wanted to emphasize the reverse polarity when you're uh, using this technique. If you have these other frequencies still playing, you might have some phase issues. So definitely test out the polarity whenever you're uh, using this technique. Another thing you might be asking is why didn't I link a peak controller to this section? Well, it's not as dramatic of an effect uh, with your kick in 808 with the higher frequencies, most of the energy is going to come from those lower frequencies. So I still like to have these playing together. So all I really did here was just duck the frequencies that are boosted in the kick. And just in general, that sounds good enough. But if you really wanted to, you could put in the peak controller to duck this little part as well. And then all you would do is just adjust the volume knob right here, which tells you how far down you want the ducking to go. So I'll go ahead and show you. So you'll see how low this is going. It's going pretty low. But if I wanted to, I can make it go really low or I can make it go in the opposite direction, go up really high. The tension knob tells you how quickly uh, you want the effect to happen. Same thing with the decay. The decay tells you how fast it's going to go back to your base level. So if I had this decay down like this, you'll see that it's moving so slow that it's not even having enough time to react uh, to the kick. So you see how slow it's really moving back up. But if you have it all the way to the right, then it's going to respond immediately and pretty much the same thing with the, t the tension knob it gives you a curve on how the decay is going to react so if i had this down all the way it's going to be super sharp because you can see the curve it does nothing and then it just jumps up real quick but if you have it to the right it has this slower curve to the point where you could hear that uh, almost EDM style side chaining effect where the 808 is ducking and then coming back in slower. So I had mine set to right about here. That way it still has enough time for the kick to play all the way through and still has uh, the 808 coming back in in time to sound as full as possible. I definitely felt a little rusty uh, coming back to these tutorials this week. Um, I took a couple weeks off uh, just for the holidays and to work on some other things. Overall, that allowed me to catch up on videos. So I actually have a whole bunch of videos already in line for you guys. So I'm going to be uploading more often. Before I was only uploading two videos a week. Uh, you guys seem to like that. So um, one thing, it kept the quality really high and uh, it gave me enough time in between videos to, to make new videos. But now, um, 
since I am ahead, you'll be seeing probably three or four videos each week. So definitely get ready for a whole bunch of videos. Hit that subscribe button and definitely hit that notification bell so that you're notified every time I do upload a new video. And like, comment, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.